Mental illness can be a difficult subject to address in video games with the seriousness and reverence it deserves. It's mired in taboo and misconceptions. A stumble in execution could feel disrespectful or offensive, but that didn't stop Ninja Theory from giving it a shot with their latest game, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Their previous character action games were relatively standard genre exercises, but with their latest title, Ninja Theory looks to shake things up. Hellblade is the story of Senua, a Celtic warrior on a crusade through the realms of Norse mythology to rescue a loved one, who was killed in a Viking raid, from the afterlife. This quest is complicated by the fact that she suffers from psychosis, which manifests in various forms throughout the game. Most notably are the Furies, voices in Senua's head whose constant chatter ranges from gentle encouragement to bitter condemnation. No one will judge her. No one will ever know. Oh, she heard us. There's no going back. In a lesser developer's hands, these could have been cheesy or grating, but with strong performances and enough lines to ensure you almost never hear the same thing twice, they're a potent element in the storytelling. They're also a good way to show off the impressive technology on display with Ninja Theory's use of binaural recording, which gives unprecedented depth to the position and orientation of sound in the game. Honestly, the game tells you to play with headphones from the beginning. The performances certainly don't hurt either. Hellblade uses a blend of performance capture technology and full motion video, and while the live action portions don't always look that good, the acting is top notch. Hellblade operates almost exclusively at one speed, absolute emotional distress, and the performances are up to the task. The acting is raw and distressing and moving, and thank god this game isn't 40 hours long because it might require medication to finish. Sinewa's psychosis also manifests in the form of visions, which is problematic in a realm of Norse mythology as it's difficult to discern what fantastical elements are part of an ancient belief system and which are all in her head. Then again, that is the nature of psychosis, to be unable to discern reality from hallucination. For as unconventional as a lot of the game is, Hellblade does still fall back on a few standard practices. There are still locked doors with a set of tasks required to open them. There are still combat arenas that can't be left until all enemies are defeated. Most environments still end in a boss battle. That's not to say that Sinewa's tail is just window dressing grafted onto an otherwise standard action game. Ninja Theory weren't afraid to indulge in long periods without combat or sequences with one-off mechanics. And it's in those moments when Hellblade is at its best when it feels like an uncompromising artistic vision. While some might deride it for its length, the game doesn't have a lot of wasted space. It feels deliberate in its pace and content. Hellblade is a big, ambitious project with a large scope and high production values that's also independently produced. It benefits from the unbridled creativity of independent development but with an asset quality usually associated with larger corporate backing. It's earnest, it's unflinching, it's moving. It handles a complex subject with a deft hand and has the technical prowess and artistic sensibilities to back it up. Hellblade may not transcend the genre, but it definitely elevates it.